Buenos días, queridos amigos y colegas. Me alegro mucho de estar con uh, ustedes hoy. And now, uh, with your permission, I will start uh, speaking English. Uh, unfortunately, because of the COVID-19 pandemics, uh, I wasn't able to travel to Madrid. Uh, but I am very happy to be here uh, with you and I want to thank the organizers for this great opportunity. The subject of my presentation today regards a uh, less known or even an unknown uh, layer of the Romanian aristocracy. You all know that uh, it is not easy to study uh, the the Eastern European aristocracies. Why is that? Probably mainly because the, these aristocracies are built on different uh, bases than uh, the Western ones. For example, Romanian aristocracy generally uh, doesn't have nobility titles. The, the Romanian boyars are not uh, dukes, counts, barons, uh, like in the Western world or even in Russia. So they are harder to uh, recognize. It's more difficult to uh, recognize them as aristocrats, especially for uh, historians or uh, sociologists from Western Europe. Maybe this is why uh, in many books, in many syntheses dedicated to the history of uh, European aristocracy, it is quite often uh, hard to find details about the Eastern European aristocracies and especially about Romanian Boyars. Of course, there were many Romanian uh, families that received during the time, during the centuries, foreign uh, nobility titles from foreign monarchs. For example, the Holy Roman Emperor, um, the Prince of Transylvania, the Russian Tsar, uh, or the um, Austro Hungarian uh, Emperor. But generally speaking, uh, the Romanian aristocracy doesn't have nobility titles. And now I am uh, coming here um, and uh, I complicate uh, once more the history uh, of Romanian aristocracy. Because I want to bring to you the story of uh, an unknown layer of this social category. The name of, uh, of this, uh, this social category is Moșnen in Valachia, in Țara Românească, and Răzeș in Moldavia, in uh, Moldova. If you search for a definition if you search for a Romanian language dictionary, uh, the most popular uh, definition of Moșnen and Răzeș nowadays uh, is uh, that they were free peasants. Why is that? Uh, in my opinion, this definition became uh, generally accepted during the communist regime. Of course, communists, communist uh, uh, historians and uh, sociologists or those who wanted at least to adapt to the main uh, ideological frame needed strong conflict in history. They needed conflicts between uh, exploiters and exploited. So they only needed two 
social layers in uh, medieval Romania. They needed the grand boyars, who were, of course, the bad guys, uh, the exploiters, and then uh, they had the peasants, the dependent peasants, uh, who were, of course, the victims, uh, the exploited uh, part of the society. And a middle class, a medieval middle class, or uh, an intermediate social layer uh, in the Romanian past was uh, not useful or even dangerous for the, the communist uh, ideology. So the Moshnen and the Razesh were easily defined as free peasants. But before trying to, uh, not to solve a problem, but to raise a few questions about Moshnen and Razesh, uh, maybe we could say what uh, solid facts do we know about them? We certainly know that during the Middle Ages, the Moshnen and the Razesh were free men and that uh, they were landowners. They were collective landowners of their ancestral estates. They certainly took part in wars. They were part of the medieval armies, for example, uh, of the uh, Valachian and Moldavian armies that fought against uh, the Ottoman Empire. And later on, uh, during the 19th century, um, if we use uh, genealogy and if we search for the roots of important personalities, uh, we can find that uh, many of them, many of the bourgeoisie and many of the intellectual elite in the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century could find their roots in the Moshnen and Razesh. Um, the politicians, uh, some of the, um, the intellectual and the um, uh, art elite, uh, the high ranking officers and so on and uh, so forth. But going back to our initial questions, were uh, the Moshnen and Razesh peasants or aristocrats? This is our uh, main question today. When did this question arise? Mainly during the 19th century, when uh, the political and intellectual elite of the country tried to modernize the Romanian principalities and later on uh, the Romanian kingdom, and they are very preoccupied about the rights of uh, peasants who didn't own uh, any land. And they debated about uh, land reform, about uh, rural reform. And during this debate, the social status and the origin of Moshnen and Razesh was essential. Why is that? Because these people owned land. Some of them were quite uh, poor. Many of them worked their own lands with their hands. Uh, many of them resembled a lot the peasants, the former dependent peasants and the peasants who didn't have any land. But these people, the Moshnen and the Razesh, did own land. So what were they? This was the, uh, the dilemma for politicians, for historians. And some of them uh, were uh, convinced 
or wanted to demonstrate that uh, these Moshnen and Razesh were the descendants of immemorial uh, communities, villages of free uh, peasants who owned land. This meant that uh, grand boyars, that great landowners usurped their rights, that they stole their uh, land during the history. And this also meant that all peasants in the country were entitled to own land. This was a, an important step um, in the political debate. But there was also another opinion, another way of thinking the history of Mojnen and Razesh. Some historians and some politicians were convinced that these communities of collective landowners were in fact descendants of boyars, so that they were aristocrats. Of course, uh, we must not forget that ideology played a hu uh, huge role uh, during this debate. But if we want to find uh, solid facts, we must uh, search for the figures. And uh, we find um, uh, documents about uh, land ownership in Valachia, in uh, Tsara Romanesca, from 1831. And uh, in 1831, we know that 20.7% of, of the villages, of the entire villages uh, of uh, Valachia were owned by the Moshnen, by the social layer. And that 31.7% uh, of uh, uh, village uh, fragments, village parts, were also owned by the Moshnen. So the Mojneni were one of, one of the most important landowners in the country. Uh, they owned almost one third of the country's land. Uh, they were as influential or almost as influential as grand boyars and uh, the monasteries. They were uh, very numerous, and uh, of course, the individuals were not always rich. Some of the Mojnen were quite poor. Uh, but at the same time, as uh, the figures show us, uh, the social layer was quite influential uh, in uh, Valachia uh, at the beginning of the 19th century. If we are thinking about uh, several um, important Romanian historians who wrote about the Moshnen, uh, they were not uh, always uh, agreeing with one another. So uh, I will cite uh, uh, Nicolae Iorga, the famous uh, Romanian historian. Uh, he was not uh, a partisan of uh, the aristocratic roots of uh, the Moshnen. Uh, he was a, a great patriot. Uh, he uh, dreamed about uh, noble origins for the entire nation. So he wrote about uh, the Moshnen as uh, the descendants of a, of a very old um, free peasantry uh, that existed before uh, the, the Romanian uh, principalities. So for him, uh, the Moshneni were uh, some sort of, uh, of free peasants or the descendants of uh, 
uh, of free peasants. But at the same time, and quite ironically, this is what I find uh, very amusing, even though Nikolai Yorga tries to convince us, us that uh, the Mojneni are free peasants and their ancestors were free men, free peasants, uh, before the boyars usurped their lands. Uh, at the same time, Nikolai Yorga writes about the pride of these Mojnen. Uh, they were full of pride and quite aware of their noble roots. So th this is a bit strange and uh, contradictory. Uh, at the same time, they were peasants, but they are very aware of their noble origins. And this points to a social fact uh, that, that we can verify in uh, various historical and uh, literary sources. The fact that um, at least uh, during the 19th century, the Mojnen and the Razesh um, didn't consider themselves at all uh, peasants. Uh, they thought they were something else. Uh, and they uh, tried to keep this, uh, uh, this difference uh, and uh, not to be um, the same thing uh, as, the, as the peasants. So they are quite uh, eager to keep their, so their different social status. Um, the, this type of uh, um, perspective about the Moshnen, Nikolai Yorga's uh, perspective, uh, can also be found in a very influential uh, sociologist, Henri, uh, Henri Stahl, uh, who wrote about uh, uh, collective ownership, uh, collective land ownership, who um, created an entire uh, uh, theoretical frame uh, for these, these uh, supposedly free uh, villages uh, before the, the creation of the Romanian principalities. But there are also many historians who don't agree with these theories. For example, Constantin Jurescu, who wrote a booklet named uh, about boyars, Despre Boyer in Romanian. And in this booklet, he includes also the Moshnen. So for Constantin Jurescu, the Moshnen during the Middle Ages uh, are part of the Boyar um, uh, category. And he says very clearly, uh, and he gives many uh, uh, historical uh, examples, uh, he says only those who owned land uh, were uh, free men during the Middle Ages in, the, in Wallachia. And uh, it didn't matter how uh, big was the state. Uh, they were all boyars, uh, the grand uh, landowners and also the, the Moshnen. And uh, his, uh, his son, uh, Constantin C. Jurescu, agrees uh, with, this, with his theory. And he says that um, nevertheless, uh, they had uh, small estates uh, and they didn't have uh, a very important political influence. The Moshnen were part of the country's aristocracy. Also, uh, during the 19th century, we find several 
uh, other definitions of this uh, social layer. Uh, Lazar Shainanu, who was uh, an important um, linguist, defines Mojnen as small landowners who live in the countryside and he defines them as the most distinguished layer of the rural population. Another historian who uh, wrote uh, the first um, Romanian genealogical synthesis dedicated to Boyar families, uh, his name was Octav George Leca, defines the Mojnen as uh, free men as landowners, and he compares them, this is very interesting, with the uh, petty nobility in Hungary and Poland. Another uh, historian and um, genealogist, Iwance Filiti, uh, completely rejects uh, the use of the term peasant for Moshnen and uh, Razesh. More recently, uh, in uh, Romanian historiography, um, especially uh, the Moldavian uh, school uh, of uh, genealogy from, uh, from Iași, uh, professors Constantin Cihodaru and uh, Ștefanes Gorovei proved uh, with many uh, medieval documents that the Razes in uh, Moldavia were descendants of, of uh, great boyars and the uh, boyars themselves. Uh, Stefan Gorovei says that there were no uh, free peasants uh, who owned land in medieval uh, Moldavia. So all those who owned land were part of the country's aristocracy. They were all boyars, including the Razesh. And I dare to say that in Valachia we had the same situation for the uh, Moshne. Um, a historian uh, named uh, Dinika Chobota demonstrated that um, during uh, the centuries the Moshnen had always been uh, separated from the dependent peasants. They were never, they never had uh, a similar social status and even uh, during the 19th century uh, they are not um, they are not they are not accepting to be assimilated uh, to former dependent peasants even though they are quite poor many of them were, were maybe poorer than uh, than peasants but they stick to this social status um, and he says that uh, the moshnan uh, status was similar to a nobility title. Being a Moshnan uh, was something of very, uh, Moshnan or Razesh uh, was uh, something of very high importance uh, for, uh, for these people. And um, to cite uh, in the end uh, uh, a colleague, uh, uh, a historian and uh, genealogist, uh, Lucian Valeriu Lefter, he has a very nice uh, formula. He says uh, that free peasantry uh, is uh, in fact uh, a historical fiction uh, in uh, Romanian historiography. Uh, this is why I think uh, we, uh, we can uh, study the, the documents and we can try uh, to better understand this uh, uh, part of the Romanian aristocracy and uh, in my opinion uh, the historians I cited uh, most of them uh, are right and uh, the Moshnen and the Razesh uh, even though they looked 
like peasants uh, in the 19th century. And even though many of them were quite poor and had uh, small plots of land, uh, they belonged uh, to the Romanian aristocracy. And um, these perspectives, I think, changes a lot the way we uh, think and we write about Romanian aristocracy. Um, because um, probably uh, accepting uh, this social layer as, as part of the Romanian uh, aristocracy will change a lot uh, the, way, the way we perceive the history of uh, uh, Romanian aristocracy and the, the history of uh, Romania itself. I'm also waiting for the Romanian dictionaries to take into account uh, the different uh, perspectives I tried to uh, present you today. Uh, I want to thank you very much uh, for your presence and I hope uh, we will be able to debate in the future and maybe to compare uh, the statues of this social layer, the Mojnen and the Razesh, with um, examples from uh, your uh, countries or regions. Thank you again and uh, have a good uh, Congress. Hasta luego.